Hello everyone, let's learn astrology, the second in my series on the astrology basics, the Vedic astrology basics. We're going to learn this time about the houses in the birth chart. If you've been doing astrology for some time, hopefully this will bring you some new insights even, so check it out. And if you're a complete beginner, it's definitely the video for you. If you're new to my channel, of course, don't forget to sub below. If the video is good, give it a thumbs up. Let's go. So every birth chart is divided into sections called houses that relate to the various areas of human life. In this lesson, you'll find out what are the houses in a chart, in a birth chart. What are the differences between the house and the sign and the individual meaning of all the houses. Make sure that you've got your authentic Vedic chart. Don't use Western tropical chart. This is not going to help you understand your horoscope at all. We're doing Vedic astrology. Also, check below. I've got two potential sources of your authentic Vedic horoscope. Jagannath Hora computer software and Deva Guru, a cloud-based system. Check those out. Links are below. So what are the houses in the horoscope? In the Vedic system, we call houses bhavas, by the way, just so you're clear. This is a birth chart. Last video, I introduced you to this type of chart, this North Indian chart, diamond chart, sukra chakra. By the way, if you're confused looking at this now, don't quite know what it is, please listen to that first video. The link is below so you can catch up and therefore this video will be a lot easier for you, hopefully. So when you look at a birth chart, everyone, whether it's Western astrology, Vedic astrology, it will be divided into 12 houses. And these Bhavas houses represent areas of human experience. The first house is in the ascending box, in the ascendant. I spoke all about ascendant last video. Once again, any confusion, check it out. Link is below. This represents your body, yourself, personality, lots of things. Second house, money, your money. Third house, your siblings. Fourth house, your mother and your domestic situation. I'll go into more detail in a minute. Every house for you, but be clear. When you add all of these houses together, there is so much depth of meaning. There is nothing you could experience on this earth, everyone. Nothing you could think, feel, even dream about that would not be given some meaning in one of these houses. Anything you can think of, any behavior, I promise you, it is shown in one of these 12 houses specifically. I could spend at least a few hours talking about the first house, second house, third house individually. Maybe I will. But in this video, we're going to get the basic understanding so we don't make mistakes and we get good astrology foundations. And the first foundation you have to have is this technique. And that is that in the Vedic astrology system I'm teaching here, one sign will be in each house. So we see first house ascendant. This will be one zodiac sign totally. Second house, the next sign. Third house, the next sign. Let's have a look at this. So here we have the chart, the birth chart of Marilyn Monroe, iconic Hollywood actress. Introduced it to you last lesson. She'll be coming up future videos. Right now, though, just check out what is her ascending sign here in the first house, of course. As I've just shown you, it is cancer. A quick reminder, the numbers in the houses in the Vedic astrology chart are not representing house numbers. Numbers are the numbers of the signs. Any confusion, check out video number one. So the fourth sign is Cancer rising and all of Cancer occupies first house. Leo, next sign, occupies second house. Virgo, next sign, occupies all of the third house and right around the zodiac. It seems a very simple system. We don't worry about degrees, ascending degrees, any of that. Sign for a house system will not just simplify things, but actually allow you to go deeper and deeper into the most incredible analysis of somebody's destiny. 
Now, what's the difference, everyone, between the sign and the house in your chart? Well, they actually go together, but there's a big difference. The signs, zodiac signs, I'll be doing those next video, bring you the karma's past life, bring you past life karma's directly through those signs. And they go into different houses of your chart, depending on your ascending sign. So Marilyn Monroe has the Cancer sign placed in the first house of her chart. Cancer is a sensitive, emotional, caring sign, has a motherly nature. So she will have this because it's in the ascendant. It's about her personality, what she is like as a person when you get to know her, that is. And Cancer is very emotional, so her emotions will be extremely strong, highly sensitive person. But here's the thing. We should know that cancer rules how she looks as well. We can definitely rectify ascendant by the sign rising. I'll talk more next video. Cancer is a plump sign. It gives a bit of roundness, plumpness. She was known for her curvaceous figure, most definitely. Let's look at the 10th house of our chart shown in this box here. The 10th house shows her career and her status and the sign Aries, first sign is there. That's a very pushy sign, a bit aggressive, going for what she wants. It's a pioneer sign and she had all of these qualities in her career, most definitely. So when you look at your chart, everybody, check out this important factor of the sign and the house, which signs are in each houses, because element of that sign goes into that area of your life. Now, every house in your chart has a Lord. That is the ruling planet of the sign becomes the Lord. If you've got Aries rising, for example, ruler of Aries is Mars. We will do all of these factors, signs, and their lords or rulers next video. Final point, the groups of the houses. It's very important, I think, for me to introduce you in a very simple, basic way to the groups of houses. Certain houses group together, having a similar intent. The first set of really important houses are called Kendra or sometimes Quadrant Houses. They are the first, fourth, seventh, tenth. They form this big square in the middle of the chart. Can you see? So any planets placed in your chart in this big middle box here, first, fourth, seventh and tenth houses, any of these, any planets, they will give you power and strength. They will push you forward. These houses represent altogether the engine of your chart, giving you energy, motivation, getting you going in life. And when you see no planets at all in this central big box here, this big box, then generally you can lack motivation, lack direction, at least for some part of your life, this can generally be seen. Next group are called tricone houses or trine houses. The first house, fifth house, ninth house. Tricone means triangular shape. Can you see here? The first house was a Kendra house, but it is also Tricone. It is a most important house, showing how the Lagna rules everything about your life, how it moves you forward. It was the moment you were born. Rising sign. And these Tricone houses, 159, are houses of fortune, blessings coming from past life. Next, we have the Dustana houses. These are a complete contrast. These are houses of suffering, challenges, difficulty, because everybody knows life is full of light and dark. These show the difficult karmas coming back by the signs and the planetary placements there. They are the third house, slightly Dustana, sixth, eighth, and twelfth are the major Dustana houses. Third house gives us some challenges, but the real challenges come in the 6th, 8th and 12th. Even to cut it down, we would say that the 8th and the 12th house are the most challenging of all. Now, don't think because you've got no planets whatsoever in any of these houses, you're not going to have any suffering in life. It doesn't work like that. The Lord of the individual house will bring effect of the house to you as well. But that's a bit advanced. So check out to Steiner Houses. Challenges are motivating, don't forget. They are stepping stones for many people.
Then we can look at the Upachaya houses, four houses, third house, sixth house, tenth house, eleventh. Upachaya means growth, getting better over time. These houses, no matter what afflictions they have, difficult planets in them, whatever's happening in your chart, in these four houses, you get better dealing with it with time. You can even get growth and good factors coming out of very challenging circumstances. Now, I've just touched on the groupings of houses, everybody. Now, there are much more advanced study of houses, which you should definitely get to. And there's a video on my channel talking about that. For example, the 3rd, 7th, 11th are Kama houses, houses of desire. And the 2nd and 7th are Monica death producing houses. Yes, we talk about all the factors of life in Vedic astrology. We hide away from nothing. It's the most genuine system you can study. So when you're ready, perhaps after this video, check out that video. It is called Secrets of the Bavas, and I will link it below for you and again at the end. However, right now, before I go on to the meaning of the houses, let's look at the most important houses in your chart, your personal chart. I've just shown you 1, 4, 7, 10, important houses, engine of the chart, Kendra. But what about your chart in particular? There's another thing you have to consider. And it's very simple. It's just this. Where are the planets in your chart? Which houses in your chart have at least one planet occupying them? Because the houses having at least one planet or more may have two, three, four, five. I don't know. Then a lot of your attention goes into that area. Fourth house is your domestic life home. One planet there, some focus. Two planets, more focus. Three, wow. You're very obsessed with domestic situation, mother relationship, home, family, etc. But too many planets in a house, and generally most astrologers would agree that is four planets or more, four or more planets in any house, that house is becoming difficult for you. It's too much going on there, like having too much noise in a house, too much disturbance. That area of your life can actually cause you some concern, some difficulty. So let's move on now. Let's learn about the meaning of all the individual houses in the horoscope. The first house in your chart is called the Ascendant Rising Sign or Lagna, shown here. This is the moment you were born. It shows so much about your physical body type, your health in life, and specifically it relates to your brain and indeed your intelligence. The condition of your first house, sign, planet, aspects, which we will do later on in this series, show how you make intelligent decisions, good choices in your life. The power of your personality, what sort of impact do you have on other people shown here and very many aspects of your personality. But only when people get to know you intimately do they really get to grips with this. Don't forget your fame, definitely. Ascendant has to be involved with some aspect of fame. Lasting fame, Ascendant is involved by sign, planetary aspect or other factors definitely but popularity can be seen here also. We see your general health, well-being definitely from this house and we also see circumstances of your birth. People around you who were there when you came out of the womb basically all a situation of your birth very very intimate factor and your body type very important People might not know your personality so much, but they can see your body type. Are you thin, fat, good looking, whatever, complexion? All of this can be seen by the first house. The second house shows your wealth. This means accumulated wealth, valuables, things which you own. This is not about things due to you, income, all of that. But how much wealth have you got? What's in your bank account? That sort of thing. Second house is your family generally, family of origin or clan. How connected did you feel as a child internally? Emotional sense of security. The second house represents sustenance. What keeps you alive in life? Your family keeps you alive early in life, definitely. But your food intake, what sort of food agrees with you? What does not? Eating disorders also. And definitely drink as well. What you drink, what sustains you? Because second house is about the face and the mouth specifically. So it also shows very strongly our speech. 
It represents your voice. Have you got a nice sounding voice or a harsher voice? Depends on the sign planets here, definitely. And how do you speak? What do you say? It's a house connected to moral values. Here's a deep factor. I haven't put it here. You get moral values from your family of origin. Have you been taught to be hardworking, truthful or something else? That will be shown here. As well as speech, by the way, second house relates to throat and very often to disorders there, but also to singing as well. Now, the third house in your chart shown in this box here. This is where we develop ego, sense of self generally in life. Therefore, a lot of conflict, argument, dissension comes into this third house. Specifically represents siblings first, conflicts we can often have, right? And cousins, neighbors as well. So, brothers and sisters are definitely shown in this house. Specifically, by the way, younger siblings shown here. Also, how do you communicate? Second house was your speech, how it sounds. Third house, what you say in terms of ability. Do you do good presentations? Have you got good writing skill? All of this is shown in this third house. And not just writing ability, but skill set generally, specifically using arms, because third house is your hands and your arms. Now, this could be a million thing. Basically, musical skill, definitely. Anything about creating anything with your hands, like pottery or something such as that, you can imagine. Anything which you are doing, even cooking, everything. Food is here, but how you prepare food is in the third house. In addition, we can see ICT skills here, computer skills, software makers, all of this sort of thing. Whatever you are doing with a computer, with the internet, any, any communication skill whatsoever there, and specifically if it's technically inclined, it's definitely shown in the third house and aspects to the house. Of course, these days, sometimes we spend more time communicating on social media than to the people around us. So social media generally is shown in the third house. And it simply represents travel in the very immediate sense. Getting around every day, local travel shown here. But it's a violent house. It's a house of conflict. It's not an easy house. I've just shown you there is there is some suffering here because you are forcing ego. You want to be heard. You want to do something in the world in this house. So third house shows holding weapons, fighting. And this can even be fighting with your words. Argumentative qualities are definitely shown in this third house of your chart. And another factor, it's the house of sexual contact. Western astrology doesn't get this. Third house is the house where we meet people, particularly have a strong sexual attraction to people. It's the actual house of sexual intercourse, sexual contact of any sort itself. Now, if you've done Western astrology previously, you may think, oh, hold on, I thought it was 8th house sex. No, no, 8th house has a completely different factor. Sometimes 8th house relates to prostitution, selling sex, because it's a money house. But third house is for everybody having sexual desire. That's a very clear factor. The fourth house of your chart, shown in this box over here. This is your biological mother, mother who gave birth to you. Your whole relationship with her is specifically shown here. Your early childhood as well, early domestic experience is shown in this house. And your residential situation throughout life, domestic life. How happy are you in your home? What sort of houses do you have? Do you own many properties? All of this can be shown by this fourth house, the lord of the house, and aspects to the fourth house in your chart. It represents luxuries of your home, specifically vehicles, cars, motorbikes, all of these things are included here. It represents education, starting education, getting knowledge. Do you enjoy school? Check fourth house as a first step, definitely. Particularly early education, primary education is definitely shown here. 
but it's a very deep house. It shows happiness. The natural Kodaka Lord is Moon and Venus. It's a blissful house if it is well aspected, showing inner peace and happiness most definitely. The fifth house in your chart shown in this box represents your children. In male and female chart, it can show children. But one thing just to say, deeper knowledge is that ninth house relates to female pregnancy. But that's advanced astrology. First child for everybody can be shown by this fifth house. And how you relate to your kids. Are you a really good parent? Do you teach them well? Are you fortunate with your kids? All shown here. Knowledge, how you learn, also shown here. Do you enjoy learning? Also, knowledge coming to you from your past life. Wisdom, philosophical, deep knowledge actually comes into this fifth house. It's a creative, spontaneous house. Art generally, dramatic art, painting, dancing, all sorts of musical ability, creativity come out of this fifth house. It's the house of your followers in a way. Students, fans, children follow you, listen to you. Students listen to you. If you've, if you've got fans for any ability in life, they will be shown here. It's the house of how popular you can be linked with the ascendant, of course. It's a house linked to romance, love, starting relationship, falling in love is definitely shown here. Not so much sexual attraction, that's third house, but the romance, hearts and flowers, teddy bears, you know, all that stuff. You see, this house, teddy bears, this house, everybody, is about having fun, having enjoyment, and it's about risk taking. So sporting activities can be definitely shown here, sporting ability and risky financial ventures speculation they are all shown in this house it's a house that shows how you prepare for your future actually fifth house shows what karmas you are doing relating to your next birth the sixth house in your chart one of the challenging houses where we get into conflict definite open conflict now with our known enemies or competitors this can be workplace particularly job interviews etc or just litigation anything such as that even divorce can be shown in this house it's a house of your health in terms of sickness. So definite sickness, accidents sometime and drugs, which you have to take in regard to that as well. But if you have skills dealing with sickness, either psychologically or medically, medical people can have strong sixth house. This house shows bad habits, known bad habits, obvious ones like maybe smoking, not eating good food, definitely maybe laziness, anything, overindulgence, all of those things. Don't want to sound preachy, but all those habits that can drag you down, even getting into credit card debt, that sort of thing, spending too much, shopaholic, all of that. Why? Because it's a house of debt. But don't forget, sixth house is called Upachaya house. Check the beginning of the video if you missed it. Upachaya means it gets better over time. There's a lot of struggle here, but you can get strength dealing with these and you can get very, very skilled here. That's the other thing. Servants, people who help you, domestic servants, example. People who work under you in your workplace as well. And if you are an employer, your employees will be represented by the house. Your foster mother, adoptive mother, stepmother also here and pets, domestic animals as well. The seventh house in your chart shown opposite ascendant rising sign definitely signifies spouse, partner and lasting intimate relationships. Planets here can signify type of spouse, but generally it is about your interaction with your spouse, with your partner. But please check, it also is public generally. Anybody who you are speaking to in the street will be shown seventh house. Yes, neighbours, third house. But when you interact with them, talk to them, that's the seventh house. And it's the marketplace of life. It's the business house, definitely. Business partner is also signified in the seventh house of your chart. And generally not known, the seventh house represents how compassionate we are because it's a house that is naturally ruled by Venus. It's a Venetian type of house. Are you compassionate, kind to others? 
You'd be surprised to know malefic planets like Saturn and Mars can make you more compassionate sometimes than the other planets. Why? Because you go through struggles. You have sympathy, empathy for others. The seventh house actually represents going away, traveling away in the sense of movement in your life. People who move around in life go to different places. It isn't just about ninth house, twelfth house. If you've done astrology before, the seventh house is a wind or value type of house. There's a lot of movement here and it's where we lose items as well. Lost items can be seen, even things that come back to us. It's a very mysterious house. One of the other things is the seventh house is open warfare, love and war, two sides of the same coin. And it's open warfare itself, challenges, people who are definitely challenging you and you are challenging them. So if your intimate relationship gets pretty difficult, this can show even warfare with the spouse, challenges coming directly from any other person to yourself. It's shown in the seventh house. Now, the eighth house in your chart is one of those Dustana houses I spoke about beginning of the video. Trauma and change, sudden unexpected factors in your life, traumas, chronic disease, sudden changes where your whole life turns upside down. That's what the eighth house represents. It can represent relationship endings which are difficult for you and it can also represent loss of job, loss of income. The eighth house gives us survival skills, people who can help other people in their traumas, such as doctors, surgeons, counsellors can be shown here. It can give us long life as we get over these difficulties, we become stronger. So it's not the house of death, but transformation starting in a completely new direction. The eighth house related to business skills, particularly investments and such things and definitely personal savings, pension pots and inheritance. Any inheritance can be seen here. The eighth house is a secretive house. A lot of planets here. You're a very secretive person for sure, but it gives occult knowledge, mysteries of life, all of this stuff. So tarot readings, mysticism, astrology, definitely. You get tremendous knowledge here. The eighth house is very good for researchers, students, if it's strong. One thing, it gives you the knowledge of the past and the future. Incredible insight. Now, the ninth house is one of the most fortunate, if not the most fortunate house in your chart, actually, because it gives you religious system, guru, teacher, philosophy. It doesn't have to be formal religion, but it will often be. It can be philosophical system, belief system, even academic knowledge here. The thing is, you find something which you deeply believe in, and that is shown by the ninth house in your chart. The ninth house specifically relates to your biological father, not the tenth house. Biological father like a teacher, guru, guide to you. How do you relate to him? Is he lost to you? Is he present in your life, supporting you or not? All of this can be seen by the ninth house in your chart. And higher education, university education here, foreign cultures, foreign business, going into foreign lands, generally experiencing different cultures are all shown, long journeys of course, in this ninth house of your chart. Going to pilgrimage as well, getting divine knowledge. But past life is shown here. Here's a big secret. This ninth house contains a lot of information about your last human birth. Lord of the house, planets here, aspects to the house give us so much information. And past life deeds affect present fortune. So this is actually called the house of Bhagya. Bhagya means fortune. Both good fortune and ill fortune come from aspects to the house, planets here, sign here, so much more. It's a most important house in your chart. The 10th house in your chart is shown in this box. It's your deeds in the world. It's the house of karma. What do you do in this life? Definitely career, working life status will be shown. But many people don't really have exactly a career, but they are all doing deeds in the world. What you will be remembered for, what you accomplish, all of these things are shown in the 10th house of your chart. 
And the 10th house specifically relates to your working methods environment. How do you work? Where do you work? Are you systematic? Are you organized? Are you more creative, spontaneous or completely chaotic in your working methods? That will all be shown in the 10th house. Now, I did mention if a boss can be actually shown in ninth house, but how you get on with the boss, fit in with the agenda can be shown 10th house. And your father's wealth, father's state in the world outside of your relationship to him. Let's be clear, your relationship with your father is ninth house. Father's wealth and status is shown in your tenth house. The eleventh house in your chart is shown here. It's supposed to be a fortunate house, but you know, sometimes we get into big conflicts because it's about gain, our desire fulfillment. We don't want people in our way, right? But it can give you gain, profit in life. Business people, profits can be here. Income from your job, that's all shown in this house. We can also get support here from good past karma's elder sibling supporters, perhaps, and friends, network circles, definitely. Specifically show support in our workplace, conflict competitors in our workplace, sixth house, supporters in the eleventh house. I haven't shown it here, but it's network circles, social groups, all sorts of groups, such as political organizations, social groups, all of these, they are shown. Even religious organizations can be shown if they are group organizations in this 11th house where we participate, become part of the group. It also shows foster father, adoptive father or stepfather. The 12th house in your chart, furthest away from ascendant, things which are strange, unknown to you, like foreign lands, going into foreign lands and foreign residence is one of the main indications of this house. But it shows losses in life, expenses in life, debt in life. So it can be difficult house to deal with. If you deal with expenses well, curtail them though, that can also be shown here. And when you give away money willingly, charity, that is definitely shown. This is good karma and to be encouraged. It's the house of the bed, sleep, night time. Definitely shows marital bed and bed pleasures, sexual pleasures, together with third house, as I've just indicated. The twelfth house shows your sleep. Do you sleep well or do you have disturbed sleep? And your dreams, are they insightful or disturbing to you? All of that. It's a house also, though, of having a little bit of isolation, being alone. This can be forced on you through circumstances or you willingly desire it, one of the two. It represents large institutions such as hospitals, prisons, asylums, addiction centers, all of these. You can be taken to these places here, definitely, or you can actually work there. One of the two, if it is shown in this 12th house. One thing for sure, this house gives you a real connection to the Supreme, to God. It's a fantastic house for spiritual practice and progress. In some extremely spiritual people, this can actually show liberation, the complete release from material bondage known as moksha. Check out the deeper secrets about the houses. Even more than this, it's on your screen right now. Video call the Bhavas. And the next lesson, everyone, will be on the signs, the Rasis. Goodbye for now and God bless you all.